When anglers think of trophy fisheries and dream destinations, most think of untouched locations far away from civilization, but not us. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is a mecca of crappie fishing opportunities. These waters are home to the biggest crappies across the ice belt, and maybe even the Midwest. Our goal is simple, to document the catch and release of as many trophy caliber crappies as possible in one ice season. Along the way, we hope to educate you on how to catch the biggest crappie of your life. Joining me again this season, two of the best ice fishermen in the country, Adam Griffith and Matt Waldron. With the help of wild game cook, Ryan Pinkala, we will also show you new and creative ways to prepare fish like you've never seen before. The ice season is here and we're ready to rock. Welcome back. This is season two of the Crappie Chronicles. Hello everybody, good morning and welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. I am your host, Adam Bartusek. Uh, I need to go meet up with Matt Waldron and Adam Griffith right now. It is Sunday, December 26th. Merry Christmas. Hope you all had a great time with family and friends. And speaking of that, if you got some Visa gift cards or some Christmas money that you want to spend, uh, we do have the Crappie Chronicles merch and our odds available in a link in the description below. So please go check that out. Thank you for all the support already. It has been awesome. Along with that, if you are looking to buy a guided fishing trip for maybe a loved one for the holidays or something, Adam Griffith is kicking off his guiding season starting January 1st. So you can slide into his DMs. We'll talk a little bit more about all of that throughout the season, but also hit him up, get some trips scheduled. And now it is time to go fish today we are heading way back i am talking way back into the thick of it we need to get to fish that aren't scared of us so we are going back to the backwaters we have a huge pressure system coming through and the fish should be eaten but we're going exploring so time to start hiking we are going deep into the backwaters How's it going? We're a little out of breath right now. We just, I think this is one of the longer hike-ins I've done with the amount of gear that we bring out. But we finally are on one of our, I think what this is like backwater lake number like four or five that we checked in the last week or something. But yeah, we're gonna give it a full send. It is, uh, it actually, you know, it's not bad weather-wise out. It's like 20 degrees, so it's perfect for, uh, I mean, it was, perfect for the walk in we didn't get too hot but holy crap that was a hike and there's no snow so and no water in the ice and no like water the other day, on the ice so we uh we had to take our time with coming out here because it's not easy hauling a sled through uh sand not easy at all so but we made it you know we're uh we're ready to go Let's i'm pretty go. i'm pretty jacked up we needed to take a little bit of a breather to be honest with you we're not all pinkala <laughs> so griff we've never been here before so what's the plan of attack kind of drill it out and see how it lays out yeah uh, it's really all we can do from the bank it looks like it drops pretty fast i mean if you look at it, it's cut bank pretty much everywhere yep so i'm so. guessing it drops pretty quickly you know it's probably just does the same thing just off into the middle yeah i think uh, we're going to set up on an inside turn and you know, see 
see how it goes. Seems like we've found that every backwater that we fish, fish like inside turns. So um, whether there's current or not, so we're gonna just start punching some holes, check some depths, see where we're at. I mean, we've never been here, so. Right. And just looking at drilling. looking at satellite imagery of this lake, it looks pretty dirty. So we, we didn't get a really good judge of depth, how, yeah, yeah how contours deep it was. and whatnot. But just looking at it, it looks like it's probably the same depth all the way around. You know, yeah. this whole thing. So. I tell you what, though, if it wasn't for Onyx, it's an app on your phone. It would have been a chore probably getting out here because we right. wouldn't have known which way to go. Right. So Onyx is pretty sweet for just allowing you to get back to places you never would have thought you could get back to. So right. Yeah, we're gonna give our full send. Let's go! So, a lot of times when we're out on these newer bodies of water, um, I usually start off with like two confidence baits that I know that I've either caught them on similar bodies of water in the past or just ones that I have a lot of trust and faith in. Um, normally that is either going to be a drop kick with some sort of plastic on it and this is actually on Bart's rod um, just because we're fishing pretty shallow water so I wanted one rod that had a lot of parabolic forgiving action um, and then the other one that I'm going to be going with, actually I don't have anything tied up, but is, is a pinhead minnow. And this is just a white and silver fleck one. Obviously, us being on another backwater today, a primary forage for a lot of these fish is going to be shad. So I wanted something that would be pretty similar to that. And I'm going to be putting that on my rod, a little bit longer rod, so I can do a lot of stand-up fishing. You know, fishing only in four foot of water, you really don't need to have any line out. So it's nice having a little bit of longer rod. But um, all this stuff you can actually get at Thorn Brothers, um, from the jig box to the baits. Um, Pretty much everything, line, reels, our Crappie Chronicles series of rods that we have with them. You can get it on their website or you can get it in store in Blaine. Um, you can stop down and say hi to Ben and Kurt and all the boys down there. And um, But yeah, so it, it's nice being able to have you know, a nice little small jig box like this because now I know my confidence baits are in here. I can slide it into a pocket, you know, super easily and I can just be out fishing. And I if I break off on like a pike or a walleye or something happens, um, I'm ready to go. I can just instantly grab what I need and go. So these super slim jig boxes that Clam came out with are the deal. They're absolutely awesome. But I'm going to get to tying on this pinhead minnow. Griff is ripping dozens of holes right now because we've got this inside turn that we're going to fish. There's a, there looks like a creek mouth there, another creek mouth here. So we're going to just kind of pepper this area. It seems like it's four foot deep right now. So uh, name of the game when it's that shallow is just to cover as many holes because there could be a foot, two foot, or a fish two foot to your right and you're not going to know about it. So ripping as many holes as possible is usually key in shallow water, but we're going to get after it here. I'm going to rig up. Bart's got to rig up and yeah, we're going to get to fishing. There we go. They do exist. They do exist! Woohoo! Ooh, hello. Stop. You see that thing? Yeah. <laughs> Just wow! Down, Jay. You're about to watch me do it again. Nice one. Look at the head, foreheads on these things. Dude, I know, right? Look at that. <laughs> hey, we, uh... I can't wait to see a big one. <laughs> big, big, big. Good one. That is why we came out here. I didn't even, uh, <laughs> again, I was looking at you, Griff. <laughs> and all of a sudden I felt weight. Beautiful white crappie. There we go. I don't have my bump board on, but judging by the hole, I'd say it's probably 12. Look at that gnarly gash he's got on its side. Guarantee there's a giant pike chilling around here somewhere, but that's a good start. Beautiful white crappie. 
Um, I don't know if there's any black crappies in here. Griff, was yours a black or a white crappie? He, okay, so we do have black crappies in here. Perfect. Well, this is just a cool, cool backwater. And if we can keep catching fish this size, that'll be awesome. This one came on a, uh, a 1 16th ounce pinhead, if I can get it to sit still. That came on the white with the chrome top. Um, that's just one of our good go-to ones, you know, for fishing this type of water. There's a lot of shad in here, so I'm just trying to imitate them as best as I could, and I wasn't not paying attention on that one. I was just sitting pounding up high, and then all of a sudden my rod just got ripped out of my hand dang near, but that's a good one. Nice start. And that's why we hiked two miles. Actually, that's not why, but hopefully it's a start to that why we hiked two miles back here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get back down. First, I'm gonna warm up my hands. It's like 16 degrees right now, but I'm gonna get back down and, you know, hopefully we can make this happen and get a big one. That's a good start though. I love power fishing them. When you can power fish these fish, it's just so much more fun because you don't, you can use big line, big baits, you know, it's easier to get a hook into them. Um, and that one, that one cracked it. So good start though. Griff's got one, I got one. Now we just gotta get Bart on the board and we're gonna keep hopping around here. Nothing on the iFish Pros yet, but this is a good start. This is a cool lake. <laughs> this is a, this is freaking sweet. So hopefully uh, there's better things to come. Crappie on the pinhead. Crappie on the pinhead. Crappie on the pinhead. Crappy on the pinhead. That is what we want. Nice little black crappie. On the pinhead minnow. No bait needed, which is awesome. And they are coming unglued on it. Let's see if I can't get another one to eat like that. Got another crappie. That's a black crappie. Right there. I'm barely up. Back down. I got another fish waiting for me. Looks like I had a little bit of a school move in. He was an inch below the ice. Griff, you got to toss on a pinhead. Okay, because they are eating it. That looks not a bass. Yeah, buddy, that's a nice one. Nice black crappie. Look at that sucker. Did not hesitate either. Just come up there and pow. All right, so we didn't know if these fish were even in this in this backwater, but uh, obviously are. That's a pretty nice one. That's our first bigger one of the morning. Close our mouth there at uh, 12 and a half. But uh, they're just built. I mean, these river fish are all built like that, but... Uh, I'm gonna get her back here. It's kind of cold out here. It's only like 14 degrees, so we're gonna let her go. But uh, made a little switch over to, I was using a motor oil Mackie Mackie this morning and I caught a couple and then they just kind of lost interest in it. So I switched over to the white and cause Waldo was kicking my butt on the white and silver pinhead. And uh, so I switched over to that and that was uh, the second fish I caught. The first one was the bass, so. There's a nice one. Finally got him to eat it. I actually just, so I put on a leech flutter spoon because they're catching them on pinheads. I figured I'd try something with a bit different of a fall rate. That's a nice black crappie. Um, and actually I've been having a tough time trying to get them to eat. They'll fall it literally everywhere. But I ended up getting that one to eat. I just slack line, let it fell. And all of a sudden my line took off. 
So, see if that works on more of them. There's a nice black crappie. Gosh, these fish are just so dang beautiful. Black crappie. Beautiful fish. Another, what, 11, 11 and a half, 11 and three quarter inch fish. Gosh. Average size of river bottoms is just so freaking awesome. I love it. There we go. Pinhead baby. You boy. Look at that sucker. Just got this beautiful white. Um, let's see how long she is. We haven't measured her yet, but I've been keeping her in the water to keep her from freezing right at 13 just to scotch over. But yeah, just a beautiful fish. Just the coloration on these things down here is just, I mean, just unreal. Thick beautiful fish but let's get her back before she gets uh, frozen up and off she goes so what I did is I actually switched over to Pink's rod that he had made just kind of a custom like more of like a spoon rod and we also use them as our iFish Pro rods and what I did is Waldo was still jacking them pretty good on the pinhead and he's using that white and silver so I thought maybe using a, a bright color but just maybe a different one I went with that chartreuse orange with the orange blade on it yeah, and that fish came in and absolutely just came unglued on it. Um, ever since I switched, it's been constant fish. I really wasn't getting mark, marking much anymore on the drop kick. And so these fish definitely want a little more uh, bigger presentation. Like you actually went up to, uh, how big was it, the ribbon spoon that you used? Uh, I don't know. It could be an eighth. Yeah, it It's was, really it big. It's big. like two so and a Bart, half inches long. Bart tried to go really big, and I think it was just a little too big. They were kind of swiping at it and not getting it. So you dropped to, what, a leech flutter spoon now? Yeah, I'm on a 1 16th. I was just marking one. All right, so yeah. I think the spoons might be where it's at, at least for now. You know, if the pressure changes and they start to get weary of that, we might have to go back to the drop kick. Um, but yeah, we're just going to keep going. I mean, this, this is amazing. We didn't even know if there was fish in here. Um, we kind of figured, but we didn't know if it was going to be numbers wise, at least to get a, get something to show you guys. So, but it's working out so far. We're just going to keep at it. It's nice to see whites and blacks too. Our yeah, chances of a big I mean, one is way higher. Yeah. It's just, usually it's one or the other, you know, like the bigger ones, but we're finding that even the blacks in here, you know, are 12 and a half inches. So, I mean, they're pretty solid fish. Um, I think for what we've caught so far, we have a chance at a true giant because, uh, there's fish like that in here. There's fish that are quite a bit bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Nice big old white crappie. Yeah. I got. Solid white crappie. Gosh, these fish are so pretty. I mean, they look like a Lake Winnipeg walleye with that green sheen going across of them. Yeah, these things are sweet. That is a nice one. Yeah, pinhead minnow again. They're crushing. It's freaking sweet. Hell yeah, that's a beautiful fish right there. Figured you were a crappie. Oh, there's a nice one. Just a brick, black crappie. That'd be like your perfect eater. These fish are so thick and healthy. But yeah, I'm just sticking with that leaf flutter for right now, but it almost seems like it's harder to get them to eat it for some reason. They all eat it when it's on its free fall, not when I'm jigging it. Another tank. They're getting bigger, boys. Another beautiful white. I'm gonna go grab the bump board real quick here. 
Just got another nice white here. Um, switched over to the pinhead. I think that's the deal now. Oops, got a feisty one. Uh, but yeah, she's uh, 13 and a quarter. We're gonna get her back here because it's really, I mean, it's really cold. So get her back. Hi, right, sweetheart. Yeah, so I think the pinhead deal was the switch. I mean, you got a couple on that leech flutter spoon, but they're absolutely hammering that uh, pinhead. And it really doesn't seem, as long as it's bright colored. Um, Waldo's using the white and silver. I'm using the orange chartreuse, or the chartreuse orange. Um, I think Bart's gonna be switching over that here pretty soon. Okay, just a little update for you. I think it's around 1, 1 1.30 right now. I honestly haven't even looked at my phone. But uh, as you can see, Griff's drilling some holes. We have pinpointed where they kind of are and we're just kind of trying to expand a little bit on it. We've gotten some nice fish, a uh, bunch of 10, 11 inchers. Um, some in that 12 to 13 class, getting a little bit over 13 now. So now we're trying to dial in where a freak might be. Because what is happening today is there is a massive pressure system moving through. Uh, right now as we speak, you can probably hear the wind starting to get up. Uh, we have a snowstorm coming in and the barometric pressure is going to plummet. When the pressure goes low, big fish like to chew. So we're trying to take advantage of, we kind of got two good, three good things happening actually. We got storm moving in, we got getting close to sunset, which always helps, and then, you know, pressure dropping. So we're trying to align them all in hopes of getting one of these kind of backwater freaks. Uh, these fish are really built well. You can tell they have not been messed with, which is, I mean, in part, because we're like way far back. We walked a long ways. Um, so yeah try to get after it and keep going. And I have switched to a pinhead minnow now because I'm sick of watching them catch fish and me not. That didn't take long. <laughs> I literally just filmed that update and tied on a pinhead. I told these guys I was sick of watching them catch fish. Just got back to the hole, dropped in, caught a fish immediately. It's fun when fish are eating aggressive presentations. He came out of nowhere. I did not have a mark on my screen. This is a little guy. I didn't have a mark at all. And I brought my bait up just to look at it to make sure my hook was entangled. And I dropped it back down and he ate it on the fall. <laughs> Pretty cool. Good one. There's a beautiful one right there. Okay, just got this beautiful white crappie, just an absolute slab. You know, it's got, I mean, really good thickness all the way across the back, nice and tall. We're gonna get him a quick measurement here. Uh, I bet you it's 13 in. Yep, right on the nuts, it's 13 inches, so. Hey, hey. Can we measure mine real quick? Oh, 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 oh let's oh. see if he even reaches five. <laughs> oh, oh, five and a half, baby. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get this guy back. You know, beautiful fish. Uh, I started off with a gold drop kick with the motor oil plastic on Bart's rod. And I wasn't really even marking that many fish when I was using that bait. You saw me take out this uh, pinhead minnow. Um, this one is the 1 16th ounce size. It's their their glow with the, the silver fleck on it. Um, absolutely awesome bait, but I grabbed that. I was catching a few. And then Bart had on a ribbon leech, and then Griff had on, um, I think it was another drop kick with the plastic. And we all kind of figured out what color they're eating because Griff has caught in a few fish on that drop kick with the plastic. Um, and he switched up to a white plastic and 
he was catching them pretty good on that too. And then all of a sudden we all just switched to pinheads. And we're catching the heck out of them now. It's been a really, really good bite. A lot of really nice fish. We're still hunting for that one giant, but uh, I, I can't complain with that. That that was a beautiful white crappie. So uh, catching a 13-inch white crappie that's as tall as that one is is awesome. There's a nice whitey. There's a beautiful white crappie. That thing is chunky. We got another beautiful white crappie here. You know, absolute gorgeous fish, nice and tall. Some pretty good thickness to her. We're gonna let this guy go. That water is ice cold. So right now, pretty much, I mean, we're catching some absolutely gorgeous crappies right now. Uh, we hiked back into this river bottom lake about two miles. Let me tell you, it was not fun with there being no snow. Um, and yeah, the bite's been absolutely awesome, as you can tell. <laughs> we're catching them pretty good. Uh, we're actually, I mean, this has been a lot of fun for us because this year we've had some, a lot of finicky fish, especially around here in the metro area. And so it's been nice coming out here because we're power fishing right now. We're using clam pinhead minnows and it's a pretty aggressive bait and they're absolutely coming unglued so it's been really nice being able to you know power fish for these fish and not have to really finesse them a whole lot you know i'm pounding this spoon pretty aggressively and i'm having them come in and you know hit it pretty hard so it, it, it's been a lot oh geez i just missed another one it's been a lot of fun coming out here because we hiked back in and it was a high risk high reward type deal because we didn't uh we've never fished here before so we were just going off of satellite and you know trying to do as best as we could to make assumptions on where the fish would be and so we kind of picked this corner of the lake because there's an inflow and an outflow coming in right here and uh we haven't really had to move a whole lot. It's actually been super good. So we're gonna keep bouncing around here. You know, it's getting about middle of the day. And- uh, Getting to about end of the day. Actually well, getting to be about end of the day. I've lost track of time completely here. That's why we got Bart keeping track of us. But um, it, uh, it kind of slowed down for a little bit, not gonna lie. And it, it's been nice seeing that it's starting to pick back up a little bit here. Um, we uh, drilled some more holes just to kind of make some adjustments to try to figure out if these fish moved a little bit and it seems like they kind of have but uh you know it's uh this is pretty cool i love coming to new places and catching a lot of really nice fish even though if we haven't caught a big one yet it's still been a lot of fun being able to come out here and you know showcase some beautiful white crappies not often we get to catch this many whites and this good of whites so it's been fun I mean, you don't need to. If you just take that thing, if you just take that case, wow, that's a big mark. Um, if you just take that case inside your house and open it, yep. it'll be fine. I'm trying, dude. You ain't doing much. Getting, getting all hot and bothered. Giant. We got him. Woo. Waldo, you need to go grab the camera. <laughs> I finally got a big one this year. So that I believe is gonna be our biggest fish of the day. I'm gonna measure it, it's a beautiful white. Mouth closed, touching 13 and three quarters. So, just a gorgeous white crappie. Look at that hump, it's just tall. These river fish are beautiful. We're gonna get this one back though because we're starting to get into prime time of when I think we could get some real big ones. So, get that one back, off she goes. Nice, okay, that was awesome. Yeah, Waldo dialed in that pinhead pattern and um, 
I was marking that fish for a little bit. It was actually really tricky to get it to eat. And um, what I did was what G uh, Griff kind of talked about when we were at the river before. That's a pinhead I'm using. So what we kind of did at the um, the river before and other backwaters, Griff talks about down jigging, and I had that fish marked forever, and he just would not eat it. So I just kind of slowly was swaying the jig up and or the spoon up and down, and just slowly bringing it down to him. And I actually watched my jig and the fish disappear. So I just brought this rod tip up. This is Waldo's Chronicle. Um, you can get all these rods at Thorn Brothers or feel them there. They're super great. But what's awesome about this rod for a spoon rod is. It's a noodle tip, so when I lift it up, I could see it bend slightly and know he was there and drive the hook home. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. It's so fun catching fish on spoons and no bait at all. And that's like our probably our fourth or fifth fish over 13 inches today, but uh, that makes me happy. A 13 and three quarter inch white's a really big white. So we're hoping for bigger, but I can't complain. Oh. oh no 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 nice white beautiful white crappie another pretty little white crappie here they're starting to come through pretty aggressively now we're still pounding it two foot below the ice um oh i just had something big come in again the sun is totally setting right now. yeah the sun's totally setting right now we don't have very good uh camera light but this front starting to come through and these fish are firing right up again we had a nice little lull during the middle of the day but they're coming back now and they're getting pretty aggressive it looks like and uh we're starting to mark a lot more fish too so we're gonna keep at it here you know we're gonna give this an honest shot all the way through i mean till after dark i think we're, we might have spotty camera light, but we got a headlamp, so that might help out a little bit. We were not prepared to stay out this late, but you know what? I'm going to get this fish back. Okay, as you can tell, it is dark. The wind is gassing. The, uh, the pressure system and the storms that are supposed to hit are definitely coming in right now. Uh, Waldo and I got a few more to end tonight. We didn't actually get anything big. I think him and I both dumped one that were probably pretty good, but it was it's tough with all this stuff going on. But anyways, great day exploring. Uh, kind of in the backwaters, new lake for us. Uh, cannot complain with the amount of crappies we caught and, you know, quite a few, probably a handful, 13 plus inch fish. And being white crappies, I mean, that's awesome. Can't really, cannot complain about that. This place probably has bigger. We might be back later this year. This is a good scouting mission and kind of showing you all the process of what we go through to kind of bring you along, show you some of the best areas to fish for crappies in Minnesota or definitely within 60 miles of the Twin Cities. So anyways, um, this video might end now or it might continue with me and Ryan cooking some food up. So I'm not quite sure which way that's gonna go. Either way, appreciate you for watching. Please like and subscribe the videos. You know the whole YouTube regimen. Uh, we appreciate all the support. This has been awesome. And uh, until next time, we are on to the next one.